Hello, hello everyone. Welcome back to Cozy Girl Fancy Nails, the coziest but fanciest podcast on the internet. I'm your host, Michaela, and I am so excited about this. I don't know, today just feels like something different. I feel like my setup just looks good. I feel like I'm prepared. I feel like I'm ready. I don't have coffee today, but I do have sparkling water. This one is bubbly. Bellini Bliss. It says non-alcoholic, so I'm wondering if this is like an actual like drink. I don't know. I don't drink, so (laughs) I have no idea. But I'm ready. I'm ready for today. And no matter what, (laughs) I feel like at the beginning of these episodes, we're going to have something going on. But that's okay. The plane can be in the background. We can keep going and talking because... I'm just ready to do this. And my laptop is on this side instead of this side. I feel like I'm used to looking over here, but it's on this side. So with all that being said, let's just hop into this episode. (laughs) It's all about professional development and how you can grow as a nail artist in your craft, in your business, and all around in your professionalism as a nail artist. So let's get into it. Okay, am I the... Did you hear that? (laughs) I hope that the mic picked that up. Um, I don't know if I'm the only one that drinks, like, things out with a straw. Even though this has, like, no sugar, no nothing in it, I remember, like, seeing something about drinking soda. Uh, It's better to drink it with a straw because it goes back, like, straight to the back of your throat instead of, like... I don't know. It was like weird. So that way, like it like prevents less cavities or something. I don't know. (laughs) I have no idea. I saw it like on Instagram or something like a while back. And then now every time I drink something out of a can, I use a straw or I pour it into a separate cup. Um, But whatever, that's what I'm doing. So we're talking about professional development as a nail artist. And this is something that I never thought that I would talk about on this podcast just because, I don't know, I didn't feel qualified, quote unquote. Um, But I don't think that just because I might not be at the top of my career or the height of my career doesn't mean that I can't talk about professional development and what it means to me. I have done research for this topic this is not just off the fly. Like I literally watched an entire video, which I will reference in this. Um, and yeah, it was just, I felt cool. I felt good. And I think that I'm going to take a lot of these, what I'm talking about today and start to apply it to my day-to-day professional life, just so that way I can grow in what I am learning and trying to do. So the first thing what is professional development? And I wrote over here, it is gaining new skills through continuing your education and career training after entering the workforce. So in this case, oop, I just hit the mic. <laughs> in this case there uh, with nails, it would be after you go to nail school or after you enter your field of work, you continue to grow and expand in your craft. Something that I think makes us good nail artists and good business owners is knowing and realizing that you aren't perfect and that you still have room to grow. I think that this is something that a lot of us do say already and know already and want to continue to practice our craft. I think it's easier when you are in the field and you're doing the nails over and over and over again, because you're constantly every new client that comes in, you're bettering yourself. And even though you might not ever do a bad set, there's still things that you can grow in and learn in and advance in, um, as a nail artist. So super excited to get into that. This video that I watched was a Ted talk and what was his name? This is why I'm glad I have my computer here because <laughs> not me side eyeing my little monitor. Okay, his name is Greg Shirley, 
And I think he taught at a university or talked at a university. And I will link the video below that I used, but he talk, talked about the cycle of your professional development. And there was five different things that go through on this cycle. So you have explore, engage, experience, embark, and elevate. So I took all of those and what he was saying, and I tried to apply it to what it would be like as a growing nail artist, as a growing nail technician, or somebody in the field of nails. So the first thing that you would do is explore. So that means you would find people that talk about a certain topic. You would read books and articles to find out more information. And there's always something that will spark this idea. So for instance, um, if you are a press on nail artist and you're looking for more income, you might want to start a polish line. And so instead of just continuing with your press ons and hoping one day you can just stumble across doing a polish line, you're going to start looking at how do I start a polish line? What does it cost to start a polish line? All of these things like you just go, you just do all the things, read about it, learn about it. The next thing would be to engage. And this is where I realized I started doing professional development when I started doing these things. So I joined things like the press on portal. I've talked about it here on my podcast before. Um, I've met a a lot of amazing people there. I've joined other groups as well. Like I think um, nails by Dom, she had a Facebook group. I was on that like my first year of doing press ons and things like that. Like I was just getting into groups where people were learning and talking about press ons. And then, uh, there's also people that do one-on-one calls. So you could actually do like this person is at the top of their career or in the height of their career. So let me talk to them and see how I can get to where they are. So that was for press ons, but There's probably so many like different uh, people and businesses that do this that you don't necessarily have to have somebody like right in front of you. I know that if you go on Instagram and you type in nail tech in your area, you're probably going to see a bunch of independent nail techs and you could probably reach out and be like, hey, can I talk to you? How did you start your business? How did you you know, where did you do this? Where'd you do that? All of the things, but there's so many people on the internet and the internet is so broad that you can find somebody that you really like and see if they do one-on-one calls or DM them and ask them if, you know, they're, uh, available to talk to you or whatever, and just continue to find out more about the, the topic of nails that you're trying to figure out. Then you have experience, so you can shadow someone, you can practice the craft, and this is the point where I feel like if you're if you're experiencing it and you're watching it, if you don't like it, that's okay. It's not for everyone. I don't believe that you have to finish out the process of, at this stage of experience because it like everything is not for everyone. So in the video, he used an example of somebody who wanted to do, uh, I can't remember. It was like something to do with like the FBI or something like that. And she was like, it looks cool solving crimes, doing all these things, whatever. It looks cool. So he set her up to go on like a ride along or something with someone (laughs) who does this. I cannot remember what it was to save my life, but you can uh, watch the video and see it. But he set up this ride along thing and she was like, I hated it. It wasn't a good experience. I don't want to do that. So if you're experiencing these things by, like I said, shadowing someone or practicing the craft, my, the biggest thing for me is, um, like if you think about doing acrylic, acrylic has a strong smell. Well, it's actually just a monomer, but it has a strong, strong smell. Anytime you walk into a nail salon or buy a nail salon or whatever, I remember at the mall, there used to be a nail salon like right by this entrance. And when you walked into the entrance of the mall, you just smelled monomer because the nail salon was right there. And so you go, oh my gosh, it smells like a nail salon. If you're sitting in that all day long, so say like you found an independent nail tech and you're wanting to be a nail tech and you want to do 
acrylic, you message that person and say, Hey, can I like shadow you? Can I watch how you run your business? Can I, you know, sit, just basically sit in your salon all day long and watch you do stuff. And you're sitting there all day long and that monomer starts to mess with your head. You're probably like, you know what? Doing acrylic isn't for me. But if you're okay with it and you're fine with it and you're like, this is part of the process, I want to keep learning, I want to keep doing it, then go for it. Like, that's the type of stuff that I feel like as nail artists, we have to experience before we can just say, yeah, nails is what I want to do 100%. And then we never really dive in, look at it and see, okay, this is actually what I want to do for myself. Um, so after you experience, the next thing that you would do is embark. So this is moving forward. You get your certifications, you add it to your business, all the things. So I'm, I'm doing this at, as a, like, as somebody who hasn't gone to school, but I'm doing it from a point of you've been to school and now you're trying to like overall, like look at your craft overall. And even if you haven't been to school and you're an, uh, I was about to say independent nail tech. If you are a self-taught nail artist like myself, there's a lot of these things that I can do like now before I even go to school. I can learn all of these things. I can start adding things to my business now before I even go to school. That going to school might change something. Maybe I'm like, you know what? After doing this, I don't want to do this anymore. But for the most part, like I am learning, I am pushing myself forward. I'm continuing to grow in what I do now. Um, so getting my certification, there's a lot of, a lot of people online that you can get your certifications with, without a nail tech license. So I can be certified in structured manicures. I can be certified in gel X. I can be certified in gel manicures or just manicures in general. I can be certified in that before I go to school. And so if you want to do that and be certified and know like, okay, this is something that I am going to excel in and be an expert in, go for it. That is my my unprofessional advice to you is to go <laughs> go for it. So once you elevate or sorry, after you embark, you're now going to elevate. So say you've been doing structured manicures for years. You've been doing it for five years and somebody comes to you and they're like, Hey, I've seen you've been doing structured manicures for five years. I'm wanting to get into it. How do I start? You are now that person that somebody is looking for to do structured manicures. They're, they're in their explore phase. So this is a cycle because you do this with everything. You do this with everything in your business. If you want to start a line, if you want to start a class, if you want to, um, open a nail salon, if you want to, um, start, uh, I don't know, like you're, you're, as a nail artist, there's so many different business opportunities that you can add to your business if you want to, but it all starts with exploring and then engaging and then experiencing and then embarking and then you elevate. So that is my little spiel, my little cycle of development for nail artists that I got from that video. And I want to (laughs) say that it was from that video. So people don't think I'm stealing. Okay. I just, I was taking what he said, but applying it as a nail artist. Um, But this is my part of my own TED talk (laughs) where I say, why is professional development important? (laughs) It shapes your thoughts, opinions, and feelings about certain things. So for instance, I have gone back and forth between doing acrylic and not doing acrylic. At this point in my journey, I probably will never pick up acrylic until I go to school because my clients love Gel X my clients love their structured manicures and my clients love their gel manicures. Like there's nothing more that I need to do. And I'd rather spend my, my time and my energy on focusing on those things and perfecting those before I move on to any other nail service, doing any other nail related thing. So the reason that my thoughts and opinions and everything has changed on that is because one, I've done some research, but I've also just experienced acrylic. (laughs) I've actually experienced it. I've had it on my hands. I've been to salons. I've watched other people do things with acrylic and 
it's just not for me. It's just not something that I really care to do. It's not something that I feel like I need to do. Um, and yeah, so I just don't do it and I probably won't do it. Not saying that that can't change in the future, but at this point in time, that's not something that I'm interested in. So that's something I keep hitting this mic. (laughs) That's something that I believe, um, we should all experience is in our professional development is shaping thoughts, opinions, and feelings towards certain things. It also leads you into more research about your field, and it also makes you well-educated in what you do. And so I'm going to go through some ways that you can dive like into do into professional development um, easy and for free most of the time. Um, and then Yeah, I'll kind of elaborate on some of these things. So the first one I have is watching YouTube videos. It's the easiest way to begin (laughs) to learn anything. Like you can type in anything, follow along or just watch, listen, take notes, whatever you want to do. It's so, so, so easy. And it can also help lead to people who um, do more things. So I followed a particular nail artist I don't I didn't follow I follow this particular nail artist who did an interview with another nail artist and I followed this one nail artist for years and I had no idea that they were in contact with this other one and so I went and followed this other nail artist and from there I was able to join certain things like the press on portal I was able to find more people that did things in my in my field I was able to like move my business along in this way. And so I truly believe that you can find what you're looking for on YouTube. I really truly do. So whether it's how to videos or whether it's watch me work videos or whether it's challenge videos, like all the things you can find it on here. These planes are getting on my absolute nerves. (laughs) I'm so sorry, y'all. Um, the next one is reading articles. Like literally, what are they doing? Um, we, me and my brother used to talk about how they're just wasting gas, (laughs) like truly. And it's supposed to be raining. They always choose the days where it's like not nice outside. Like I would expect when it's like 90 degrees and sunny for them to be out there, but they're always like out there when it's windy, cold and wet. Don't know. Um, but anyways, the second one is reading articles. This one can be tricky because there are bias articles. What I mean by bias articles is means that if you have somebody who loves Gel X, they're going to talk about all the benefits to Gel X, and you're not going to see one single thing wrong with Gel X. But then you're going to go find somebody who loves acrylic, and you're not going to see one single thing bad about acrylic. But then if you look down on both articles, you're going to see one that's criticizing acrylic and one that's uh, criticizing gel X. So you have those two. And I truly believe that you should, you should read both articles and do more in-depth research about those things. So what I mean by that is if you read about gel, read also about acrylic, read about gel and what is in gel X and read about all of those ingredients and read the harm harmful benefits to both because as somebody who loves to do nails and loves to push nails on people and loves to do things there are certain chemicals and products and things in all every single one (laughs) all nail products okay I don't I don't want to hear it. Gel's better than acrylic because of this. This is better than this because of that. No, they all have harmful products in them, but you can find ways to do things in the least harmful way possible if you do your research. And if you do what, like, if you do, what am I trying to say right now? You're going to have to do research on all of it. And then from this point, you'll be able to find what works best for you and what works best for in your business. There are so many people who have worn gel their entire lives and nothing has happened. But then you have some people that are like, I put gel on my finger, got gel on my finger twice. And now I have an allergic reaction. That is everybody's different. I know people that have worn acrylic for years, years, 
and they still wear it and it's still fine. Their nails are beautiful. It just, it's, it all comes down to what you want to do as a nail artist. It doesn't matter what anybody else says, what anybody else does. If you've done your research and you stand by that, then stand by it. Don't let anybody else get in your way. Okay. (laughs) The next one is to read textbooks. So this is coming from somebody who is a self-taught nail artist and I am just trying to push my craft to the next level. I have the Milady textbook. I think that it's pretty standard across the board. I don't, I don't know that for a fact, but I read that when I'm doing my professional development or anytime I'm setting aside time to work on my business or work on my craft or whatever, I read that book. Like I started at page one and I'm reading it as an actual book. I'm not jumping around saying, oh, I need information on this or I want information on this. No, I want to be an expert. I want you to come to me and say, oh, when did nails start? And I can tell you in 1800s or like in BC, nail art was something that people used. Like, that's what I want. I want to know the history. I want to know the science. I want to know everything about nails. So I'm reading that textbook. Um, But you can read, uh, it doesn't have to be a textbook, but it could be like just books on like, okay, how do I start a business or how do I open a nail salon or how do I start a business line or a polish line? Like all of those things are things that I know people have written articles, probably books. (laughs) There's probably so many things out there. You just have to set aside the time to do the research. If you are trying to be a successful business owner or a successful nail artist in general, learning your craft and learning about different things is key. I promise you it's key. You don't want to follow anybody who's like, oh yeah, I just use gel all the time and like does do these challenges of like, oh, let me see what it looks like to have gel all over my hand. Don't do that. They didn't do research. They don't know that they can get an allergic reaction. They don't know that getting gel on your skin actually can form a reaction. Not that you already have, like you could not be allergic to gel and then become allergic to gel. So don't follow people like that, please. Okay, please and thank you. The fourth one are podcasts. Like mine myself, I find that listening to different podcasts of different people's different opinions and thoughts and education and their research helps me to dive deeper into certain research or to form more of an opinion on something else. I could try to find all the people that agree with me 100% all the time, but that wouldn't challenge me. That wouldn't make me go deeper into research. That wouldn't help me find who I want my business to be and who I want my business to represent and how I want people to see my business. If I'm just literally being like, okay, this person said that, so that's what I believe. This person said that, so that's what I believe. I'm not saying that, you know, they're wrong. I'm just saying they should push you to do more research and not just their word goes, you know? Last, last thing that I have on this list is to join classes, um, do one-on-one calls and get certifications. So when I say join classes, um, you can, I know there's a lot of like online classes where people just do demos and things like they'll do things live. So you can ask questions. Um, you can join master classes. Uh, I had a master class last fall for like fall designs and I actually joined a master class I think it was like two years ago for like Christmas designs and like I was pushing myself to learn new things, learn new techniques, find new products, all of those things. And it, it definitely, um, it definitely helps when you can ask questions, but even if you don't like, I think the Christmas one that I did was like $20 and she had like eight videos like pre-recorded and she just put it into this package and like sent it to whoever paid. Um, so that was nice, but I couldn't ask her questions. I couldn't ask her to redo anything, you know, show me a different way, like all those things. So, um, joining classes like that, uh, and master classes, 
doing one-on-one calls. I've actually never done a one-on-one call uh, with anybody just because I felt like the master classes were enough to where I could ask questions if I needed to, um, but never like one-on-one. But I do think that that can help if you are serious about what you're doing and you're really looking up to uh, a certain nail artist or person of business. Um, and then lastly is getting certifications. Like I said earlier, you can get a certification no matter where you are, as long as you are serious about doing it and you're not just taking it just to have a certification, but like, it's like something that you're like, I actually want to be an expert in this and I want to know the techniques. I want to know that person's products. I want to know why that person does what they do. Like that's the type of certification that you're going to want. So I think that's it. I started this podcast here, like, on 10. And then with all the sneezing, coughing, choking, I don't know what was going on, but obviously I cut all that out because I'm not doing, I'm not that gross. Okay. (laughs) But I hope this really helped you guys because I definitely think that it's something that we should take seriously as people growing. I think people see a successful business and they're like, I want to be like that. How do I get there in a week? And that's not how it works. (laughs) Those people have spent time, research, dedication to that thing. And that's how they achieved that goal. That's how they achieved their business. It doesn't just happen overnight like we want it to. So professional development is something very, very important. And I did learn this actually on my full-time job where they actually had us do professional development during like our work hours. We just would find things to read. We would learn more about the business. We would learn more about the ins and outs of social media because that's what I did uh, for that job Um, and things like that. And uh, getting like meta certified for (laughs) like Facebook and Instagram, like that, that was something that we had to do. So I am technically meta certified in a couple of different areas. So I just, um, I encourage you to do this. I encourage you to really dig deep and find what you like to do and become an expert at it. Because like I said, if you realize that you aren't perfect in a certain area and that you should be you should continue to practice and you should continue to do what you know you should be doing, (laughs) you'll get there. So that's all I have for you guys today. I hope you guys enjoyed this video as much as if I call this a video one more time, I hope you guys enjoyed this podcast as much as I did. I love talking all things nails and professional development is one of those. So you can follow me anywhere. You can find me at Cozy Girl Fancy Nails. And I think that I'm going to end this podcast here. So with all that being said, remember to stay cozy and to keep your nails fancy. And I will see you in the next one. Bye, you guys.